Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and welcome to Kerbal Island Airways. We are beginning our first express service from Kerbal Space Center to the Old Island. We are, we're going to travel Mach 1 or more for part of the way, peaking at just over two times the speed of sound, and hopefully touching down inside a couple of minutes. This is a modified Ravenspear aircraft. I've removed that rather redundant basic jet engine, replaced it with a solid rocket booster to get us off the runway, and added a drogue chute, in the hopes that when we land we won't overshoot the runway. Now we're getting up to our cruising speed, we're going to throttle the engines back to about 30%. Uh, the island is approaching very, very quickly. If we if we went faster, we would suffer from severe thermal problems. Cutting the engines completely now, bleeding off speed through turns. We're going to maintain this altitude until we are lined up for the runway here. We've rolled over so that the nose starts to dip just a little. Still going supersonic and now dropping down below the speed of sound. Getting lined up for the runway. This is, of course, a normal approach for Jebediah Kerman, uh, exactly following the glide slope that he prefers for this particular type of approach. And now we're down to 230 meters per second, picking up speed, but time to deploy the landing gear. Flare hard to knock off a bit of the speed, get low over the runway, and deploy the deploy the chute. No. Yes! Yes, now slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Don't run off the end of the runway. Okay, so this is pretty good. This is Kerbal Space Center to the island in under two minutes. But you know, people have done a whole lot better. In fact, people have been on Reddit and various other places demonstrating their ability to fly to the island really quickly. So I thought I would do my own version of it. So here we have uh, the speed demon, I guess we call it, Jebediah Kerman at the controls, locked away behind a heat-proof fairing here. We have 16 S uh, RT-10 solid rocket boosters to accelerate it up to speed. And we're now traveling at uh, almost four times the speed of sound driven by those large engines. Uh, once we ditch that, the whole thing becomes unstable and we switch over finally to an RT-5 for the final approach towards the island. Once that's gone, well, we are just bleeding off speed and hopefully the speed will let us judge our landing. Perfectly! 43 seconds! But that's not as fast as I can do. In fact, I noticed that somebody had done 42 seconds, so I thought, okay, gotta keep doing this. Unfortunately, well, the, the thing with these ideas is uh, they tend to be a little uh, things of obsession, let's say. Not only does the engineering require certain uh, compromises to accommodate the mission plan, but uh, the timing required to make this fly is uh, rather tight, let's say. So yeah, we have the whole thing kept behind a fairing because the fairings actually have higher heat tolerance than many of the stock parts. And the nice thing is they protect everything inside, so when the cockpit with this engine pops out, it is cold and able to continue. Uh, oh, one problem I found is that landing on the island, well, uh, I didn't have time to pick an airstrip, so I just kind of put myself in the nearest mountain. And Jebediah Kerman subsequently lost his footing, leading to a 900 meter roll down the side of the mountain towards the ocean, which is of course looking rather inviting down below him, and as it turns out, soft enough for him to land just fine. But after a bit of analysis of the trip, we decided to make a couple of changes. First of all, we moved the departure site to the launch pad because it's actually slightly closer to the island. Secondly, we added another eight RT-10 solid rocket boosters, bringing our total up to 24 during the early part of the trip. At this point, however, we start to suffer thermal failures and we have to we are literally hitting the limit. Any longer and this thing would be disintegrating. It's rather beautiful the way the whole thing comes apart, I must say, and that little RT-5 kicks in. This is a world of extreme stage separation. Watch the G-Force as, the, as uh, everything shuts down. And we land just 40, 41 seconds, maybe. So uh, that's better than what I saw posted on Reddit. 
So that's a little improvement, but I figured let's try and do better because, you know, this obsession will not let me go. And unfortunately for me, sometimes the aerodynamics won't really let me be. Things start to lose control and this thing ends up going backwards. Of course, the thing about speed challenges is that you feel that every problem can be solved with the addition of more boosters. So now, 32 RT10s for that initial boost up to Mach 3 or thereabouts. Travelling very low, of course, just because we're trying to take the shortest line possible. If we have to take some sort of parabolic arc, then I suspect that gravity may not be strong enough to hold us down. The aerodynamics, on the other hand, are quite happy to punish me, uh, disintegrating my spacecraft just a little bit early. Uh, yeah, and that means that I'm still going to the island, but I've lost a lot more speed and I simply am not going to be competitive. Cruising over this, slowing down, uh, crashing. But even then, it was a 42 second, which is too slow. Gotta go faster. So eventually, due to nose cone attrition issues, we decided to switch to the Mark 1 pod. Again, the Mark 1 pod is slightly uh, better in terms of thermal protection. So we thought we'd switch to that and use it as a more aerodynamic nose cone. Unfortunately, uh, first run was a bit of a failure with the chutes opening prematurely. Never one to be daunted by repeatedly failing at things. Uh, well, yeah, I continue to repeatedly fail here. We, of course, uh, were doing just fine with this until I thought perhaps I should open the fairings a moment early to make sure that this thing staged correctly, but that didn't work very well. Now, in this particular run, I made a fatal error early on. I uh, only, I forgot to activate my engines. I forgot to throttle up my engines to 100%. So, I was wondering why I had so much liquid fuel left, and it's because I hadn't really fired them up. So, still flying, I thought, why not just keep these things running here? Oh, and then it all flies off, disintegrates. RT5 kicks in, and we are going way faster than usual, and actually it turns out that we impacted at 39 seconds, so we know that this is going to be faster if we can get the engine set up correctly. For the next trial, I of course made sure the pedal was to, to the metal. In fact, we literally welded the accelerator pedal down because we don't want anything other than 100% thrust here. 1500 meters per second at 600 meters. No wonder everything is breaking up. Even the nose cone on this little uh, cockpit disintegrates. And we slow down with 35 seconds on the clock. So we can get to the island in 35 seconds, but getting actually onto the island is a matter all to itself. However, for this one, I think we should have old me narrating it directly for you. Okay, all my stuff's up, mouse is in the right place, and whoa! That is a little crazy, that sound. 300, 400. 500, gotta watch my solid fuel. When my solid fuel hits zero, we gotta detach so we don't lose any speed. 800 meters per second, 900. Things breaking up, detach, solid rocket boosters. Now we have set prograde marker. Okay, going well, 1400 meters per second, 1500. And stage, 1600 meters per second. Fire up the RT5. Continued, 30 seconds on the clock. 31, 32, 30, stop, 33, 34. 34, 35 seconds, and that is it. That is the express service to the island, as demonstrated by Valentina Kerman, Thrillmaster Extraordinaire. <laughs> and I see, look, the RT5 temperature is still increasing because heat is conducting away from the capsule into it, I think. <laughs> that is hilarious. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.